Hey everyone, Angelo here, Hollywood filmmaker, greatest screenwriter in the history of the world, recovering hobo, and I did it. I finally overthrew capitalism. I said, you've done enough here, all you capitalists. And I put in its place a worker democracy. So notify your bosses when you go back to work. A lot of you are have been working. Who am I kidding? Like, you're not off for the holidays. It was Thanksgiving yesterday, but a lot of you are still at your jobs, you can go to your bosses now, or if you're at work, just be like, oh, uh, notification time, boss, I got an update. No more capitalism. I no longer work for you. I no longer kick up profits to the bosses. If you're at Amazon, you don't work for Jeff Bozo anymore. Uh, if you're at Tesla, you don't work for Elon. And you actually get to uh, receive all the profits that you make for the company. So when Jeff Bozo's enjoying his $500 million mega yacht and uh, Elon is flying on a private jet, they're going to be like, whoa, like I no longer reap the benefits like uh, some kind of creature that feasts on another animal from the workers. They're going to have to go out and get jobs of their own. So resume day time for Elon and Jeff Bozo and Warren Buffett. You know, CVS is hiring, Walgreens is hiring, Rite Aid is hiring. I've seen some corner stores they're hiring. You can get real jobs now. So that's exciting. By the way, I got some of this. So these are, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but I love his paintings. Zdzislaw Bekzinski, Polish painter. Uh, I'm a fugitive from a chain gang still. Picture from Redbubble, I don't know. And then some art from Venice Beach that someone gave me. So, okay, I haven't like actually overthrown capitalism, but like I kind of did in my own mind. I just saw it, I'm like, why do we keep doing this to ourselves? So I've been really busy lately. Mostly my videos I've been posting uh, are just of me rollerblading or riding my bike and talking about the need for uh, active mobility reducing our dependence on cars. You can look up tons of great videos on that stuff. They're springing up all over YouTube. Just look up, like, if you start with, like, Not Just Bikes, that's kind of the biggest channel. You branch out from there, like, you'll find dozens and dozens. I keep finding new ones coming up. Flurf Design is a great one. It's spelled F-L-U-R-F -F and then Design. Guy named Bryce runs that channel. I saw his video, he makes amazing videos, and they were getting like a few dozen views, a hundred views, he had a few dozen subscribers, and, and I'm like, you're gonna blow up. And finally, within the last like week or two, yeah, his videos are absolutely blowing up and get getting hundreds of thousands of views, and he's getting thousands of subscribers. I'm like, I was like, yeah, it's a matter of time. So, I can't even speak about that stuff as well as these other people can, but they talk about the need for uh, better land use so that we're not so spread out geographically so that uh, we're connected um, with our neighbors so that we have more joyous neighborhoods so that we can get around without the isolating houses on wheels that are cars and not have to go into debt for them and also the danger of it I mean how many people like driving with other distracted drivers or angry drivers or impatient drivers, or just confused drivers, drunk drivers, uh, it's dangerous. Or you're the one doing that stuff uh, for a lot of you. I mean, I don't trust probably half the people I know uh, to drive like safely and uh, drive defensively. And we don't need these force multipliers in everyone's hands, but that's capitalism again too. So if you want, you can just tell your bosses like, yeah, we're taking over the workplace. We have a worker democracy now, no more capitalism. Uh, tell your landlords like we're not paying rent, rent strike. We're kicking you out actually, because you're not the Lord of the land. You can't own land. Uh, we're going to have the equity in our homes and uh, grocery stores too. There would be anyways, all that stuff. So. I just want to talk early this morning about some stuff I've been doing. So a lot of biking, 
I've uh, been doing more rollerblading after I didn't have time for it for a while. Maybe it's just getting older or what now, but I, or, or what? I didn't even say any, an alternative. Older or just I'm going at it so hard without breaks, but like it takes my legs longer to recover after I rollerblade. But then again, I'm rollerblading really hard for like several hours and uh, then not letting up the following, like I'm still riding my bike a lot. I'm still, um, I'm doing even harder leg workouts than ever. I'm like, oh, okay, I should take it easier, like lighten the leg workouts. Because I went for a 10K uh, rollerblading race yesterday at Santa Monica. It was awesome. And we had to skate up a, a spiral ramp at Santa Monica. Oh man, that was hard. I did it. Like I somehow did it. But it, it was more like, um, I'm trying to think, like, what's the image? Like, uh, people hiking up a mountain and putting their stakes down. It was kind of like, that's what my feet were doing. Like, I'm not so much skating up, like, rolling, as just, like, like chopping at the ramp with my inline skates. But it was awesome seeing people out. I was just so content. Like, I wasn't worried about anything. I wasn't, like, uh, trying to escape anything. I had like incredible concentration. It was nice just talking to a few people. I wasn't like that interested in talking to a lot of people. I wouldn't have been opposed to it. I just just kind of enjoying the experience. Um, and uh, and someone actually did give me this painting there. Like they posted that they were giving uh, some paintings away, and I said I want one, so they brought it over. That was cool. And. Uh, um, I had cramps when I was uh, lying in bed last night. They were so painful. And it was like, I didn't even know there were muscles here. Like on the side of my leg, I was getting cramps. I was like, what is this? What's going on? Been really just focused lately, doing a lot of writing. So I've been in screenwriting for classes for two years. And I've been so busy with class assignments, I've barely ever had time to work on my own screenplays. Now I actually have a break from classes. So I'm working on my own and I'm just incredibly focused about it. Like that's the best thing I can say is just like I want to go straight after it using all the tools I've learned and all the resilience I've built up in myself doing these classes with very difficult assignments. And I haven't been writing stuff like I'm personally interested in. The point of the assignments for class is to write stuff that this is distracting, isn't it? Oh, whatever. Can't. That's a little better, maybe. But uh, it, it's like just technical exercises meant to improve your ability to write with clarity and impact. But it's not like your own personally, in, like the stories you're personally interested in. So it's kind of amazing to like take that sort of barrier down uh, where I wouldn't be too interested in anything I was writing because that would divert from the purpose of the assignment and now just write stuff I really love. And I'm going to have an, at least one more class, uh, but it's not going to be for uh, at least a few weeks. I don't know, like two months. I'm not sure. So I realized, okay, got to take it easy with the leg workouts. And uh, I've just been so focused lately. Um, been dieting down, which is good. Last night for Thanksgiving, I ate a lot. And it's not that I regret it. I don't feel bad about it now, but I'm like, eh, I didn't really enjoy that that much. I was glad I had some Trader Joe's chicken pizza. But other than that, I'm like, I had some chocolate babka and these alcohol-filled um, chocolate tr truffles or just chocolate treats. I'm like, I don't really, like, enjoy eating stuff for the taste so much now. Like, I just want to eat for a purpose. Like, to get the nutrition I need. I don't mind being hungry most times now because I'm eating with the purpose of I want to be hungry to diet down while getting the right nutrition so my body utilizes all the nutrition it gets and then when I've got more get more cut again then I'll start dieting back up my workouts have been going even harder lately build a little more muscle and left arm never quite catches up the way the right arm is but anyway still uh just um uh, still like in the early stages of my weightlifting still, cause for years I wasn't doing it right. And I wasn't dieting right at all. My mom's doing really well. Talk to her every day. Uh, she wants to visit LA. Like, I don't know when she can, because that's, uh, difficult to schedule, uh, for her. And, 
It's expensive. Still been um, dealing with, you know, recovering from being sexually harassed. And just uh, like that happened last year. Somebody sexually harassed me for six months. It was a living hell. And that combined with being so focused. And I realized like wherever I go, this thing is right there. You know, uh, it was surreal. It was amazing. Um, yesterday after the uh, rollerblading race and uh, I did not win. Uh, I wasn't even really trying to race. I was like, I just want to do the whole track. But I'm, I'm getting better, getting more confident. Like, I know if I fall, I probably won't get hurt. I know how to stop a little bit better. I'm still learning how to stop. There were a few times where I had to yell at drivers. Um, like, hey, I can't stop. Just let me go. Uh, because we were on the street a little bit. Um, but they were cool. And, uh, like, I think they believed me. Like, I don't know how to stop uh, properly. But I'm getting there. Like... I sort of zigzag to stop. I'm sort of doing the bubble stops. T stops, like, I'm still not proficient at, but, like, I can do this, the beginnings of a T stop before I kind of lose my balance and I got to just uh, turn my skates forward. But it was great, a great experience. But then afterwards, there was this gratitude circle they held, and everybody stood in a circle, the, the hundred skaters or so, and people would just run to the center and shout out something they're grateful for. I ran in and yelled, uh, I'm no longer homeless. And, um, but as this was going on, it was like, it reminded me of two moments, one in Shutter Island, Martin Scorsese's film, and another in Silence. In Shutter Island, at the end, I won't spoil it, but there's a moment where DiCaprio, there's like an overhead shot of him as something incredibly momentous happens in the story, and the sound drops out, and the lights fade around him. It's very theatrical. And he just collapses and passes out, but we don't hear it. And I'm like, that's what it felt like, in a way. The sound was dropping out. I'm like, all I see is the guy who sexually harassed me. Like, the sound is dropping. Not in, like, obviously he wasn't there. And it didn't mean, like, literally, like, as if he was physically there. Just metaphorically, I'm like... It wasn't like traumatizing me, but I'm like, I see him. And it's not even like, there's no action to take. There's nothing to do. It just like, I realize what he did to me, it's going to be in front of me my whole life in a way. Um, and that doesn't mean all bad or anything. Like everything's bad now. What he did was all bad. Though, like there's nothing good about that. But um it just like the, I swear, it's eerie. I can just conjure up that feeling now. Just the lights dropping out, the sound going out. And it's like, I just see this thing, you know, in front of me. And I know like everywhere I go, it leads to that in a way. I'm always having, meaning multiple things, but like I'm having to confront this thing in me uh, that this creep did. And the other moment from silence, similar when uh, the lights, the, the sound goes out and the image fades when it's, there's a picture of Jesus and we're seeing it kind of in uh, the character of Andrew Garfield's uh, father, um, Rodriguez, his mind is seeing it. There's no actual picture of Jesus in the scene, uh, or actually there is, but it, um, but this, like, there's a painting of him, and it's just what he sees in his mind's eye as the lights dim on him, and it goes silent, and, uh, it was like that too, but I was thinking more Shutter Island, because we're actually seeing DiCaprio in action, and, um, it was a profound thing to experience, and, um, like I said, it wasn't traumatizing, in a way it was emboldening, it's just hard to describe. I realize lately how much when now that I've been writing more of my own stuff, stuff that I've been feeling strongly about, like stories I want to write, and I'm like, oh, words are inadequate to describe every everything uh, that I feel. And same with everyone. Words are totally inadequate. And also it's weird using language more myself lately now that I'm actually writing my own stuff. I find myself misspelling words more. And I'm like, oh, that's weird. I don't normally misspell stuff. And and also, having practiced Spanish a lot, I'm still not fluent. I should be. But um, practicing Spanish more, I'm like, oh, Spanish makes so much more sense than English. I can see now 
how much more clearly English was almost like reverse engineered to fit all these like like illogical patterns like there's no rhyme or reason to them they're just like the spellings of words don't make sense we have silent letters all the time they're different pronunciations for different words the same word can have multiple totally different definitions um i just see how like it, it's like what i heard the story of how microsoft um tried to like uh, build windows the operating system or yeah i think it was that which is they sent someone to a computer like a software store and just told them to buy like one of every program there and instead of like just having uh creating an operating system and telling software developers here's how it works and maybe hardware developers i guess i don't know like here's how it works like we're going to have this thing that runs really well and efficiently but you have to make it your software or hardware fit to our operating system instead what they did was they found all these different standards for how people are making their software and just uh worked backwards to make windows um run all those different pieces of software and so as a result you have a must much less robust and efficient operating system but it gets the job done albeit in like backwards ways that's what i feel like english is and that's what I, when i uh am writing i'm like oh this is so backwards and confused and illogical i almost uh like i i see now how much more efficiently silent films can transmit story and how i think uh and this is nothing new but david mamet said i think david mamet said i read two of his books that films should work uh as silent films meaning you should be able to watch and understand everything that's going on without the sound on now that's obviously not always like literally true but i think for a good movie you can tell the emotion you can tell why it's interesting and also if you turn the picture off and just listen to it the movie sounds interesting and you feel something compelling and i've seen it so often once in a while i get a sort of bait and switch where this is not true but it's like if clips of the film don't seem compelling and powerful in the trailers or in the commercials usually for me it means the film itself is not compelling or interesting and it's not like oh just the trailer didn't know like they didn't know how to cut the trailer right and uh vice versa if it's not looking interesting or compelling nothing grabs me I'm like the movie probably is not going to either cuz there should be something infused in every shot in every turning point of the story every moment that makes it interesting now there can be movies that just don't fit well to the form of trailers and uh there are movies that cut well to trailers that aren't that interesting so that happens too but just something to note like even when i'm just scrolling through looking at uh like it's just like testing for myself how i watch movies now when i'm looking at like a streaming service like canopy uh california libraries um free streaming service for movies they have so many foreign films broken down by every category so many recent films i love it and it's free uh like i know like why do some like the thumbnails for the movie and titles that i don't even know look much more interesting and appealing than others why is that and i'm seeing looking for certain graphic elements certain things that feel paradoxical in the thumbnails that like grab my interest like oh how did th this is weird you like and it, it, there there's the um cheapo version of that the cheap imitation of it which is just like you know the orange and teal like oh two opposite colors in a way or uh uh something along those lines but then there are versions that do it in a much more interesting manner where it kind of grabs your imagination like how's this work this thing is looks so or like there's a story in the image even if the story can't be articulated with words i even think like the poster of gone girl i'm like perfect just perfect poster that wisp of cloud and the the digital um the uh, pixelation or the like the digital like glitching of the image i'm like that that's conveying like through a visual metaphor of what this story is of this guy and his wife and uh the kind of ride we'll be on and then i see ones that look to like netflix man their thumbnails have become like youtube icons in a way and that they you know, 
people have found that certain things do well on YouTube icons that make it very palatable and feel like it's not going to be too challenging. And this is something that you click on it, it'll be easy to watch. And I think of that most with the icon I saw back when I had Netflix for the social network. My God, this was uh, <laughs> embarrassing to look at. So this is a like fairly dark film. Like it's got a lot of heavy emotion. Um, Mark Zuckerberg is so like just on the edge of like likable, dislikable. He's very dislikable. A lot of the film, but so compelling to watch. The the thumbnail on Netflix is a still. It also, Mark Zuckerberg virtually never smiles in the film. And yet, what's the thumbnail on Netflix? It is an image from him standing up when uh, he's having the coders take shots and, to see who's going to be the next coder for Facebook or something. And he's standing there. I, swear, I don't even, like, it, I don't know if this is from the film or if they took, like, uh, an image from some of the dailies they shot. But, like, he's standing there smiling and they obviously brightened the picture, like tweaked it to make it look brighter. So it looks like a movie about a guy who's just happy and smiling with his friends. <laughs> like, this is so dumb. This is so wrong. Like, show the actual drama. But I'm like, yeah, that's kind of the, uh, like, uh, shear off, like, get a sanding machine, you know, and shear off all the rough edges, the interesting grooves and corners of this thing and just make it flat and like appealing and it's not too interesting but it's not going to be uh provocative or offensive it's just kind of this easy like vanilla ice cream just palatable nobody really objects to it it's not that exciting either um uh like design uh or their their approach to like their view on what designs should be for the icon thumbnails so i'm thinking about stuff like that and also it's inspiring to have art up like i look at this stuff and also i'm like ah damn why did i put those two next to each other they're both like so similar i should have spread one around but now the, it's going to damage it if i peel them off so just leave them there but uh i've been so focused yeah, just everywhere I go, it leads to the same things, to writing, to being well, to recovering, to eating right. I'm like not even like, yeah, I ate a lot last night and eh, give me a little gas and all that. Uh, but I'm like, man, eh, was it really worth it? Like, I didn't enjoy it that much. Like, even after all this, it's not like, oh, Thanksgiving. I was exhausted. Um, so I'll say Wednesday night and it's getting to what I'm talking about. Wednesday night. So left work. And I've just been going nonstop, like 3.40 in the morning, getting up, no matter what time I go to sleep, working out at least four days a week, riding my bike pretty much seven days a week, then rollerblading, getting up early, riding. Um, and uh, reading when I can. I haven't been reading a whole lot lately. And uh, I slept like 10 hours. Had the most, like I lied down at like 5.30 at night. And uh, had the most like bizarre nightmares. Like, man, those were weird. And um, yesterday being a holiday, I realized the old me would have wanted to like pig out, relax. I don't say pig out in a derogatory way, meaning just like indulge my, enjoy myself, like go to a restaurant or something. Now I'm like, no, like I'm not going to experience joy in that. I'm not looking for that. Nothing wrong with it. But I want to get home, do my stuff, uh, meaning write, read. Uh, yeah, I was going to have a nice dinner. Honestly, I would have been fine with the chocolate babka and the chocolate truffles. Just just eating pizza and a little bit of steak, uh, too, a little steak strips. Um, I had some potato chips, too, some chive and horseradish potato chips from Trader Joe's. I'm like, I could have done without those, two. They were good, but I could have just done without them. Like, they don't bring me much joy. Um, I realized what I'm looking for is something deeper, which is, yeah, my writing, dieting right. Like, I'd rather just diet right and uh, cut down and then build up again, bulk up. And then when I get to certain body fat, like, diet down again, keeping the protein high to keep the muscle I've gained. And also rest better. So, got to dial down the leg workouts as addicting as they are. They're fun. I have to. Like, my legs are worn out. And right now, I have to go to the bathroom. So, that's going to bring me some joy. I figure that's a good time to stop the video. But uh, let's overthrow capitalism, everyone. Let's have a democracy of the workers. Let's get uh, transit everywhere. What a joy 
uh, would it be? Can you imagine what a joy it would be if pretty much any time we could just get on a train or a bus for free and just go around the city, not have to drive, not have to park, not have to worry about bad drivers, pay insurance, pay our car payments, pay for gas, pay for car maintenance. Did I already say car maintenance? I forgot. My uh, bladder is getting the best of me. So anyways, thanks for watching everyone. Uh, read, uh, read Heat 2. That's a great novel. And then tell me what you think. All right, bye.